Okay, everybody, let's take a quick look at this. This is from page 412. Uh, this is number 5. It says the line x plus y is equal to 0 is tangent to the graph of y equals capital F of x, and we want to find f of x if, and then we're given a series of derivatives. Now, before we go too far with this, I want you to notice here that the line x uh, plus y is equal to 0 means that we're looking at the line y equals negative x. That's our tangent line, okay? And notice that you know that the slope of that line is negative 1. You know that from grade 10, right? This is already written in slope-intercept form, so I know that the coefficient of the x is the slope. That's significant because remember, okay, recall the derivative is the slope of the tangent. So now that I know that the slope of the tangent is negative 1. Now I can look at all of these things here, and I'm going to go through and do these one by one. Okay, so let's take a look at a here. This tells me that the derivative is equal to x. Well, I know that at some given point here, that's got to be equal to negative 1. Okay, so I need the derivative here, which the question tells me is equal to x. I need that to be equal to negative 1. Okay, so where does x equal negative 1? Well, where x is equal to negative 1. Okay, so now all of a sudden, immediately I have the x-coordinate. Okay, this is the x-coordinate along the function where the derivative goes to negative 1. It worked out really, really nicely for me. Now, if that's true, bearing in mind that this is the line tangent, okay, to the curve at that point, that means that this line intersects the function at that point so if x is equal to negative 1, therefore the y-coordinate I'm going to look for here is going to be the negative of negative 1, okay, or positive 1. In other words, what's going on here is the point of intersection here is going to be the point negative 1, comma 1. I got the x by simply setting the slope equal to the derivative of the function, and that just immediately spit that out for me. And then I get the y-coordinate by going into the equation of the tangent. So now I've got a boundary condition. So now I can go one step further. I can go f of x is now, and I'm going to take the antiderivative of this. It'll be x squared over 2 plus c. Okay, my arbitrary constant. Don't forget about that. Plug in the negative 1, 1. So 1 will equal negative 1 squared over 2 plus c. So 1 is going to equal 1 half plus c. Bring that over, and I get c is equal to 1 half. So therefore, I know that my original function in this case must have been x squared over 2 plus 1 half. I believe in the answer key, they, they factor out the 1 half. Okay. Now let's take a look at b. In this case here, the derivative, the function is, uh, that we're given here is x cubed. So x cubed, and I know that this must equal negative 1, the slope of the tangent line, which is for all of these will be negative 1. If that's the case, then I know that x must be equal to negative 1. I'm just going to take the cube root of that. And again, as soon as I know what x is, I can use the equation, oh shoot, I can use the equation of the tangent line. He said while he was looking for the little correction tape to make his mistake go away, and he finds it, and then I go yoink. Okay, so I'm going to plug in the negative 1 there, so this becomes positive 1. And again, I know that it's going through the point negative 1, 1. So there's my boundary condition. So now, I take the antiderivative of the, of the, the slope function there. So this is going to be x to the fourth over 4 plus c. I'm going to plug in my boundary condition, so 1 is going to equal negative 1 to the fourth over 4 plus c. That's just one quarter, bring it over, and I will get that c is equal to three quarters. So therefore, my function is going to be x to the fourth over four plus three quarters. <clears throat> and then let's look at c. In c, we're told that the derivative is going to equal negative x to the fifth. I know that the derivative should equal the slope of the tangent, which I know is negative one. So I'm going to solve this for x. Now, this is the first case here where we're going to get that x is equal to a positive value. 
I know that when that goes into my, uh, the equation of that tangent, oh, I did it again, why am I doing that? That's gotta be one. And so I know that my y coordinate is negative one. So now my point of intersection or my boundary condition is the point one comma negative one. I will take the antiderivative, and so that's going to be negative x to the sixth over six plus c. I will plug in my boundary condition to get negative one is equal to negative one to the sixth over six plus c. I mean, that works out really quite nicely. Uh, this will end up being negative five sixths equal to c. So therefore, f of x is going to be negative x to the sixth over sixth minus five sixths. And then lastly, we're going to get d, and d says the derivative of the function is equal to negative one. Well, now that's an interesting result, because what I've been doing in the, the previous few steps is immediately setting that equal to the slope of the tangent, which is negative one. So, okay, this is a little weird. It almost falls into my lap too quickly. If I take the antiderivative of this, I'm gonna get y is equal to negative x plus c. This is the equation of my tangent line. But the thing is, I already know the equation of the tangent line. Shoot, and I shouldn't have said that. Sorry, that should have been f of x. Okay. I already know that uh, the equation of that tangent line was negative x here, so without uh, a phase shift. So basically, you were given the answer to this one right away. It was that function right there where c was equal to zero. So therefore, I can say right away that y is equal to, or shoot, I did it again. Why am I doing that? I'm so sorry. Not y, f of x is simply equal to negative x. When you take the derivative of that, you get the negative one, the slope that we're looking for. So in this case, it's uh, just because the, the derivative is a constant, I know that I've got a linear function, and if I've been given the equation of the tangent, well, that's, that is the function that I'm looking at. Okay, it's as simple as that. I hope that helps.